Your daughter is now what, 13? Correct. So where does the drive exist over 13 years? <laughs> well, you know, 13 years old, she's still dealing with spinal bifida. You know, she beat the odds though because doctors said she may not never be able to walk or maybe never, never have a natural childhood ability of learning. But today, Nayel, not only she's walking, she's running. You know, she does flip, she does cheer type of things. You know, she's one of the smartest little girls in her class. She's very intelligent, very smart, and very, like, independent. Very. And, you know, and a lot of things, when, when I see her and her going through the situations, the trials and tribulations that she had to go through just as a baby with spinal bifida, to see so many sur surgeries and things done to her, man, that was, all, that was my motivation. I'm like, this little girl go through all this. I ain't got no excuse to yeah. do what I got to do. You know, I got a tattoo right now on me that we hold in hands, and I call it the road to success because she strengthened me. And I tell my daughter all the time, I'm like, babe, I don't know what I'd be doing if it wasn't for you. Mm. You know, you came in and, 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 and changed my whole life, my mindset. The things that I wanted to do, it was no more because, you know, when I brought a life into this world, what I wanted to do had to be put on. On hold because it was all about her with the condition and she made me a stronger person and you know it's just the love for my children man. but, but Deontay I see I, I watched highlight <clears throat> highlights of you and your fights and I, I swear and I, I take every one of these interviews I take things away and the thing I took away from you is I think you would have been good at anything you put your mind to and it made me think about me. Like, I think no matter what I, if I made a decision and I put all my focus and I'm going to be really good at this, you just happen to choose boxing. If you would have chosen basketball or football, it would have been the same thing. Do you see that? I that boxing is just, it happened to be the thing you chose. It happened to be the thing that you put your entire focus on. Well, most definitely. I, I totally agree with you on that. You know, like I said, I always talk about my father. I give him a lot of credit, you know, because he'd been there the thicks and thins, you know, uh, of our lives. And he built us to have a, a strong work ethic. And with that being said, when me and my brothers, when we apply something to something, our mindset is so strong that we get the job done, no matter what mm. it is. And we love when people to doubt us. That makes us even stronger. Because the only thing a person can do, they can only use action with their mouth. Mm. But we have the, the ability and the power to not only use action with our mouth to reply, but we're the one that can plot real mm -hmm. action to the solution to solve this problem. And now, when people say you can't do something, and then you take all that and you, you apply it with what you have, you show them, like, I did what you said I couldn't do. So in, in, in boxing, which is not necessarily a sport that you can control the next step, right? Mm -hmm. The Correct. next fight. How do you keep how do you keep the motivation, the intensity? How does how do you keep that self, that drive? Well, you know, I haven't accomplished my ultimate goals in boxing. So with that being said, it still allows me to have this mindset that this is just the beginning. Every time I take a, the next further step or the next opponent or the, the next big fight, I'm always saying this is just this is just the beginning, you know, because I don't never want to see it where I'm not learning no more. Mm. I'm not, I can't get up in the morning because I'm in silk pajamas and silk sheets. You know what I mean? Making it hard to get up because you're mm. slipping. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I never want to get that mindset, you know, to, to, to thinking that, you know, with that work ethic. And, and like I said, that we have, you know, I, I'm still providing for my kids. I still have things that I want to see there. I'm building for generation wealth. Mm -hmm. And when you're building for generation wealth, you know, you got a long, you got a long ways to go, and there's a lot of work that you're gonna have to apply to whatever your craft is. So, with that being said, I'm, 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 I'm still not satisfied. I'm still going and going. I'm a hungry champion. So, in, in, uh, we're in Alabama, where, where you grew up. Why didn't you leave and go somewhere else? To L.A., to New York, to Miami. Yeah. Like, why stay? You're the heavyweight champion in the world. Why stay right here in the woods on a lake <laughs> where we're not near anything? <laughs> Man, 
when you're describing that, that sounds like peace to me, mm. you know? And the saying is that no place like home. And I made it from here. Many people tried to get me away from here. You know, after the Olympics, I had Russia. Russia wanted me to come. He said, you, next mm. heavyweight champion of the world. And they wanted me to come to Russia, but you know, I didn't, I didn't, Russia was too cold for me, you know? Mm. And we had other people gave me suggestions and, you know, drilling me on why I'm staying at home and all the distraction. And they have other gyms in other states and cities. But, you know, like I said, the way I came up in boxing, my name, I wasn't, I had, I had to write my name in the books mm. because people looked over me. They looked over me, one, because I was from a state that they didn't know, they, that they didn't see fighters come out of, but if they did their history, they'd see uh, Holyfield is from mm. Alabama, they'll see Joe Lewis is from mm. Alabama, and they'll see Ernie Shavers is from Alabama, but they had to start their career elsewhere, you know. But me going through the Olympics, I made the Olympics in a year and a half. No one in the history of the box has ever made it as fast as I've done it, and guess where I've done it from? Mm -hmm. Right here. So the saying also is, if it's not broken, then why fix it? So every time I have camps, I come back home. This is where I'm comfortable. This is where I can meditate and visualize what I want to do when I'm in the ring or anything I do. This is where I get my sanity, my peace. And I never let that, I always have something going on in Alabama is, so I can come back is home. Is there anybody you listen to? Meaning is, uh, uh, to me, everything I do is gut. Mm. So uh, I'll take advice, but at the end of the day, I want to feel my ass is on the line. I want to make that decision. Mm. Is there anybody that you're listening to, or is it falling always on, on you? Well, you know, I grew up in the church, you know. My, my father was a minister at the time. My grandma was the pastor of the church. Mm -hmm. Now my father is a pastor, so, you know, I was very sheltered, you know, into believing in Christianity and different things like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm big in religion. I'm big in faith, you know, but I'm also big on energy feeling. As well, I can feel vibe or energy, sometimes emotion. I got a true gift. My grandma said I was anointed by God. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I was, I knew I was destined to be something. And like you said, you felt like I would be good at anything. Mm -hmm. And that's so true. Because my grandma said, I'm anointed, she used to tell me. When I got in trouble at school and get suspended and stuff, she didn't discipline me. She, she was a teacher. She taught, like, she used to t talk, talk to me all the time. And I couldn't comprehend because I was a child. But when I became a man and put away childish ways and started going through life, mm. I started to understand bits and pieces. I'm like, oh, I see now what she was saying. You know, I didn't understand about being anointed and God trying to use you. Use me for what, you know? But when you become a man and you, when you've been put in positions, you start to transform and you start to understand things. And I understand it all now. You know. When you think back to starting out the professional career, what was the goal? My main goal was to make money for my daughter. Okay. You know, um, pay for medical bills. And did, did you think, uh, or put, I don't want to lose. Mm -hmm. I want to be, what was each fight to you? What, 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 what did it mean to you? Each fight was for my daughter. Yeah. You know, I had a goal. I had a, 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 a mission to accomplish. I said, I told, I, I set out to tell my daughter a promise that was unfulfilled yet. Like I said, I come from promises that was unfulfilled for me all the time. So I know what it feels like for somebody to tell you something and it doesn't happen. Mm. No, do they even put effort into making it happen because mm. that was, that was, that was told a while back years ago. Maybe they forgot or maybe they had moved on. But the person that they told to, they don't really look back and say, dang told that person is and not knowing that they holding this deal to their heart. Mm -hmm. I told my daughter I'd be a world champion. I, told, I looked her in her eyes when she was one years old and I was going to make sure that happened. So every time I step in the ring with a fighter and still to this day, after, with all my kids as a, a seven now, I want better life for them and the way I had to do it is with my hands. Everything I have, everything I've done with them with these. Did, did, I know what you're going to say, but did you think you'd be 40 and 0 today? You know, I never had, I never looked at it or uh, how long can I go undefeated or how many guys can I knock out? Can I knock out? I never think about 
my record. I never think about knock guys. I'm, I'm still surprised when I knock guys out. You know what I mean? I'm still, I get still surprised, you know, because I tell people I have two different personalities. Outside of the ring, I'm Deontay. I'm this loving, tall, giant gentleman, yeah. you know, that loves people, you know, love interacting with people, you know, because I feel you just never know who you may be talking to, no matter what they are from, where they're from, or no matter how they look, you know, or what their skin color, you just never know who you're talking to. Sure. You know, so I like in adding, but inside of the ring, it's a whole nother possession come over me. I'm the bronze bomber in the ring, and the bronze bomber, when I'm the bronze bomber, baby, he don't care. He don't care who you are, where you from, what you saying you about to do. I know what I say I'm about to do, and I'm finna show you. I got the opportunity to be able to show my actions, not with my mouth, but with these right here. And that means everything for me because when I look at my children and they're smiling and you say, good morning, baby. And you got this youngest baby smiling and, you know, all her teeth coming and slob coming down when she happy, you know, and come and want to get on you and kiss you automatically. Man, that's a life. That's beautiful life. Like I tell people, I have love, peace, uh, and I have great health in my life. Do, do, you th do you feel pressure being every fight that you're undefeated? Because some people say in sports, whether it's, I'm a Chicago Bears, 1986, mm. 1985 fan, they lost the one game. Sometimes it's good. Like, yeah. The pressure's off. I can go win this thing. I can get it over with. Do you, f it, does that ever? I don't think about, I don't think about losing. Yeah. It's a negative entity, you know. I don't think about losing. I don't think about nothing that's negative. Yeah. You know what I mean? I always think about winning. And with that being said, we are powerful. Our words we speak are powerful. It's just how we have to put it. You have to be very specific about what you say and how you put things in, <laughs> in line. Because things will come true. It's the law of attraction. What we think, what we speak, will be drawn to us. That's why certain things can happen to us and we never know or understand why it's happening to us. We don't go back and result on the, the things that we've said or whatever in the moment of time because it's just what it is. It's a moment in time. And we spoke something. So so what's the difference between Deontay, 33 years old today, and, 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 20, and 13 years ago when he first started boxing? I'm more in tune with myself. Where does that, like, where, where does that come from? I've learned a lot. I've seen a lot of things. I've met a lot of people. You know, I've been introduced to a lot of things that works for my life. So would you say, because clearly I couldn't get in a ring with you, but I would say when I think about, because I take away something from every conversation, mm. and what I think about with you is, as you describe your father and work ethic, mm. like work ethic, it's a constant, it never goes away. It's, it, it's just, you can't teach that. It's either in you or it's not. You're not going to stop boxing for two years and start up again. That's not you. Is that, is that true? That's very true. You know, like I said, certain things are born with. You're born with certain things, you know. And, you know, it's a lot of things I'm born with that, I, you know, I don't have to train for. I don't have to prepare for. It's already instilled in me. Only thing that I can do is make it stronger. And I makes it stronger. That's why people don't understand me. They can't figure me out, especially in the boxing. They can't figure me out. They see I have an unorthodox style untextbook style and my my fundamentals is not one on one you know and I never understand people when they always complain about my style or how I you know if everyone has the same style then boxing wouldn't be as exciting as it is you sure. know if everybody had the same fundamentals the jab the right hand the left foot sure. everybody's doing it the same then what's so exciting about it sure. and then boxing styles make fights so with my style, not only do I create excitement, but I create thrilling knockouts, dramatic knockouts, knockouts that you can only see in the movies.